where does complementarianism rank on the triage of, uh, of, of, of like working together with other churches? I, you, you have a statement in the preface that, that it, it has this notion that uh, you, you're happy really to partner with uh, churches that don't hold a complementarian view so that we can reach our city for the gospel. Um, what does that look like maybe for the Journey Church and how have you seen that as being an effective kind of corporate witness or is the verdict still out? Yeah, yeah. I think, uh, I think God is very pleased with people who basically stay in the Apostles' Creed to, to send revival to groups that kind of hold to that. I mean, I think he's very pleased to people who hold to the authority of Scripture and even beyond the Apostles' Creed, you know, and the reality of heaven and hell and, mm. um, and you know, the, the divinity of Jesus and, um, you know, the things that we would hold as fundamentals. Like, that is, you know, those are the closed-hand issues that you go, okay, we, we can't work with groups that don't hold to those things um, because we, we basically drain the, the, the gospel of its power mm. and, and definition. And so... It's a deal breaker, but this is an open-handed issue for me um, it, with regard to partnership because, um, as I said, my, my Galatarian friends preach the gospel. They believe strongly in the authority of Scripture, um, and they're planting wonderful churches. And if, in, in my mind, um, we live in a heavily Catholic city in St. Louis. I mean, every you know, um, everything is every little municipality is saint something and there's you know something like 700,000 Catholics in our city it's ridiculous uh, the the influence that is here because of of you know Catholics in our city are just hugely influential so you know I'm looking at it going okay um, if we are going to um, make uh, you know their actually correct assessment of Protestants, uh, null and void, because they're, they're, they basically said this, if you guys split off, you're going to keep splitting, right? Hmm. That's exactly what's happened. Uh, with, you know, there are something like 30,000 denominations now, right. I don't know the exact number. Um, and, and so the city looks at that in my, in, in, in my vantage point, and I've heard people say this and go, well, what is, what's a Methodist, Baptist, what is all that? It's very confusing for people to look at, the, at Christians and go, why can't you guys get along? I mean, why do you guys have to have millions of dollars in property that you all, why, what, why do you, you know, what is all that all about? And so I think for the witness of the city to work together with people who hold to the fundamentals, I think absolutely speaks to unbelievers saying, you know what? They have some different issues. It's like I have different issues. But at the end of the day, those people are about loving God and loving people. You know? And so I think it's important. And I think we have something to learn from people who are not in our tribe. Hmm. So I've learned a ton. My, my view of, I, I, for instance, I saw my own sin and my church's sin about really not empowering women through my egalitarian friends. Hmm. Um, because I would, I would go to their churches or I would hang out in their staff meetings and I would, I would see these women who were, and I'm like, they're not, they're great, but we've got great women. Why aren't we letting them, you know? And so it just really helped me see some of my own sin and blindness mm -hmm. on that particular issue and on many others. We have a lot to learn. Uh, years ago, I heard um, a, a Pentecostal pastor, Jack Hayford, who's I think still on television. Mm -hmm. um, he, he said to his mother, who I think was a pastor, um, in the Foursquare uh, denomination, he said to his mother, um, she was in some kind of a, you know uh, gathering with Baptists and Presbyterians, and he said, "Mom, why are you fellowshipping with those Baptists and Presbyterians? We have the truth, you know." And, and his mother said to him, "No one has all the truth." Mm -hmm. And what she meant was, um, no one has exhaustive truth, understanding about what the Bible teaches. Mm -hmm. We have a lot to learn from each other. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important because I think God can teach us through other believers who disagree with us. I also think it's important for the city who looks at the church and says, hey, they disagree on some of these other issues, but really these guys are all on the same team and they talk about this Jesus and I need to know him mm -hmm. because of what, I, what I'm seeing in these churches. Mm -hmm.